Hi, I'm Lisa Claxton, and thank you for joining me for my free class on polishing with silicone discs. My wire work focuses on textile techniques in wire. Everything that I make, I patina and polish. Over time, I found that it was really difficult to get the polishing tools into the cracks and crevices created by knitting or crocheting or even weaving my wire. I found that using the silicone polishing discs, I was able to really get into those spaces to bring out the detail of my work. When I first really started doing a lot of polishing techniques on my metal, I had very limited space for a studio. I had replaced my kitchen table with my jeweler's bench, and my metal polishing tools were stored underneath my couch. I found that using my bead reamer was a nice compact way to be able to work in a small space and use this tool to get professional finishing technique on my intricate wirework designs. And let me show you just how easy it is. The tools you'll use for this project include silicone polishing wheels, a mandrel for the wheels, a screwdriver to attach the wheels to the mandrel, a handheld bead reamer or a flex shaft in the form of a Fordham or a Dremel, Pro Polish pads, and for safety you'll use a particle or dust mask, finger pro tape, scissors, and safety glasses. So here I have two different discs. The first disc is a knife edge disc. You'll notice it has a pointed shape on the edge. This is really good for wire work or anything that has dimension and texture. The second disc I have is a square edge and you'll see it's flat on the sides. This is great for polishing flat objects discs and clasps. Both discs are made with rubber and are impregnated with silicone carbide, which is what polishes the metal. They are appropriate for all different styles of metal. Here I have a mandrel that I use to mount my silicone wheels and a screwdriver to help me do that. I'm going to begin by mounting my first wheel so I'll just unscrew the top of my mandrel. I'm going to fit the wheel onto the screw and secure it into the base. Now I'm ready to begin polishing. I'm now ready to fit my polishing wheel into my motorized bead reamer. You can use a Fordham or a Dremel tool. Either one will work. The benefit of using the handheld reamer is that it's very portable and it's easy to travel with. So I'm just going to unscrew the chuck, insert the mandrel, and tighten. And I really want to get this nice and tight so that the mandrel doesn't move freely within the chuck. Anytime you use power tools to create your jewelry, it's important to take on proper safety precautions. When using the silicone polishing wheels, you should always use a particle mask. Additionally, you should always wear safety glasses, and to help protect our manicures and to keep from feeling the heat of the polishing wheel, we're going to be using Finger Pro Tape. To apply the tape, simply cut about a 12 inch length of tape and wrap the tape around your finger. 
The great thing about this tape is it only sticks to itself, so it won't stick to any surface. By wrapping my fingers, I'm going to protect them from heat and also keep my fingertips clean. I like to go ahead and wrap my thumb and my first two fingers. These will be the fingers that are actually gripping the metal, where my free hand will be holding the tool itself. An important note about Finger Pro Tape is that it should always be stored in a Ziploc bag. If left out and exposed, it will dry out and no longer stick to itself. Also important is to make sure that you always leave the end of the roll doubled over so when you go to use it again, it's easy to find the end. Here I have two sample pieces that are in need of polishing. You can patina your pieces with either liver of sulfur or silver black. The wire wrap chain is made out of sterling silver and I have a copper disc here that's been stamped with a pattern. I'm going to begin by polishing the beaded chain. It's always important that you hold your piece securely when polishing. Here I have a chain, and to keep it from getting caught in the reamer as it spins around, I always make sure to hold the excess lengths with my other fingers. So to polish this piece, I'm just going to hold my first link on the top of my finger, turn on my polishing wheel, and all I need to do is just apply light pressure And you'll see that the abrasive wheel is removing the top surface of the patina. Remember, always secure the piece between your fingers. Here you'll see that I have one link that's been patinaed and not polished and one that I just polished. It's removed all the highlighted sections of patina. And I'll just simply give this a rinse with water to remove any excess patina flakes or silicone. And you'll see that the polishing wheels do a great job on coiled wire. And now I'm going to polish my copper piece. Because I've stamped into it, it's made the metal slightly concave. Because of that, I find that my knife edge wheel will work the best. So I'm just going to secure the disc in my hand, turn on my wheel. So just with this little bit of polishing, I can already feel the heat in the metal, and this is why it's important to always wrap your fingers with tape prior to polishing.
Now I've put on my square edge polishing wheel and I'm going to show you what this looks like when we polish a blank. So I'm just going to do the opposite side here. This side was done with the square edge. When I'm polishing I apply light pressure to the piece. If you're pushing down on the wheel against your metal too hard, you'll notice the piece will heat up quickly. So I'm just touching the surface of the metal and allowing the power tool and the rotation to do all the work for me. Over time and polishing, you'll notice that your wheel gets pretty dirty. Also, as we're hitting the edges of metal, it does start to wear off the silicone polishing edge. Don't worry about this. When it's dirty, it's still working. I use my wheels until they begin to lose too much shape on the edge, or they're just about half the size they are when I buy them new. After you've polished the bulk of the piece, you can then do a final once over with a pro polish pad. And this I'll just simply rub over the entire surface of my blank. And this is just going to remove any little spots that were left over from the polishing wheel. Thanks for taking this class with me and don't forget to always use your safety tools.